This is Eugene Panrutkiewicz. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc. And the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Today we have an Asus X551M laptop computer with a cracked screen. And I'm going to show you how to replace a cracked screen on an Asus X551M laptop computer. Okay, before we get started, we have to find the model number for this laptop computer. And in this case, if the palm rest, if the label on the palm rest is missing, we go on the bottom of the laptop computer, and there's a label on the bottom of the laptop computer right next to the Asus logo. It says X551M, and that's where the model number is. And also, this is the non touch screen version of this laptop computer. So before we start the disassembly, we're going to show you the tools we're going to use for this procedure. We have a PH0 electronics screwdriver. PH stands for Phillips and zero is the screwdriver size. We have an X-Acto knife or a hobby knife and that's to use the, used up to lift up adhesive tape and sometimes also to pry seams open in the laptop. And we have a pair of metal tweezers and that's to manipulate cables, remove any screws that may be stuck, and sometimes we use that for prying also. Okay, so first order of business is to remove the screen bezel. That's the plastic frame around the screen. In order to remove the screen bezel, we have to remove two screws at the bottom. They're hiding behind some plastic screw covers. So the first step, is to use our hobby knife or exacto knife to remove the plastic screw covers from the screw openings and I like to put them right beside the screw opening so I don't lose them so there's one and two once we do that we use our screwdriver to remove the two screws at the bottom and for each step in the procedure, for each set of screws, I like to keep them in a separate pile in the order in which I remove them. And that helps me keep track of which screws go where when we're putting everything back together again. So we start our pile over here. Once we remove the screws, we want to snap off the screen bezel. And the way I like to do that is start on the side and put my fingertips or fingernails on the, in between under the plastic part and gently lift the screen bezel up and out and then listen for snapping sounds. In using this procedure we work our way around the screen. If we get stuck at a certain point we come back to that part later on. So take your time on this. This is probably the hardest part of the whole process. And we keep moving. And once we moved, so the part that, once we kept going, once the part, the part that was stuck, it popped open and there we have one more corner that we need to pop open. And that pops open also. Okay, once we do that, we do the same thing on the bottom. Pry the bezel open from the bottom. And sometimes there's a seam on the bottom that we have to fully open. And then once we fully open the seam on the bottom, we push the bezel forward and we can use the screwdriver to help us along with this on the bottom. And there's a stubborn part right over here that we haven't quite got. So what we're going to try to do is, since we removed the bezel up here, we try to rock the bezel out and usually that does the trick. So what we did was popped open the bezel on the top, then went on the bottom, popped open the seam on the bottom, and you can also use the X-Acto knife to get in to pop open the seam on the top and on the bottom. 
And then once we did that, we can rock the bezel out and forward like so. Okay, once we do that, the screen assembly is exposed. And for this type of screen, it's mounted by screws on the side that go into the screen on the side. And we want to be able to access those screws. So we have to remove a couple of screws from the metal mounting brackets to access the screws on the side. So let's start with that. The first two screws that we're going to remove is the two screws at the top of the screen assembly right here. So there's one and two. Next step is this metal mounting bracket has four screws that are securing it to the back of the screen assembly. There's two here and two here. So we're going to remove those and for each step once again we have a separate pile of screws in the order in which we remove them. There's one two three and four and when you remove the last screw make sure you're holding the screen a little bit a little bit tightly in case the screen falls forward on you and then once we do that we gently move the screen we rock the screen forward see what else is holding the screen in place and we see that the only thing holding the screen in place right now is the two bottom screws that go into the screen but right now it's hard to access those screws they're right down here you have to access them at an angle so we don't want to quite do that so we have a trick to access the two screws at the bottom and what we want to do is loosen the screws the three screws on each side they're holding the hinge to the back of the screen assembly maybe loosen them by two turns or maybe one and a half turns just enough so we can move the move the screen bezel back enough so we can access the screw on the side and it looks like from here we can that's enough to access the screw on the side so we do the same thing for the other side loosen it maybe by one and a half to two turns just enough to access the screw on the side and then go from there. Alright, once we do that, we push the screen bezel back a little bit, I mean we push the back of the screen assembly back a little bit, just enough so we can access this screw down here. So we remove the screw and the same procedure when you're putting back together, just hold this bezel just exactly like this and work the screw in. So there's one and once again we are keeping track of all our piles of screws and the same thing on the other side just hold the bezel back and there's enough space to access the screw once we remove the two screws on the bottom we can gently lay the screen down like so The next order of business is to remove the two metal brackets on the top of the screen because once you get the new screen these metal brackets are not part of the screen so you have to make sure to save those and put them on the new screen. So what we want to do is remove the screw that's holding the metal bracket to the screen and keeping the screw in the metal bracket so you can keep track just put the metal bracket to the side and the same thing with this other metal bracket and the way I put them on the side like this is I know the screen goes in the middle so I don't confuse which bracket goes where okay 
next order of business is to remove the connector from the screen and the screen will be loose or free. So in order to remove this connector we want to use our X-Acto knife or hobby knife to pry the corner of the tape up that's securing the connector. And if one side doesn't work, we're going to try a different side, the second side, just enough so our fingertip can grab the tape. Let's see if that works. And it is tight, but we can gently lift up the tape. And the same thing, actually. The connector came out, but I'll show you how to do it properly. The video cable is wedged inside. Video cable is wedged inside, so we want to move the screen all the way back to the back of the screen assembly, so the connector doesn't just come out. We'll reconnect the connector. Okay, so let's pretend that the connector has not come out yet. So move side the screen all the way against the back of the screen assembly. And to remove the connector properly, what you want to do is grab by the back of the video cable and slide the connector out like so. This means it's removed properly. Let's reconnect the connector again. When you reconnect the connector, you'll feel but not hear two clicks when the connector is properly engaged. And let's take a look at the, what a properly engaged connector looks like. Uh, pause the video right here. There should not be a gap in the seam between the two sides of the connection. The two sides of the connection should be flush with each other. This is a properly connected connection. All right, let's once again remove the connector. And let's take a look at this screen. Okay, for some reason, for this model, the, they put a piece of aluminum foil on the lower left-hand corner of the connector, or the screen, and this aluminum foil, it's not part of the screen itself, it's part of the laptop. So we want to remove this aluminum foil gently, so that we could reuse it. Remove it from the corner so that there's the plastic film stays on the screen and the metal foil is removed from the back of the screen. So gently remove the metal foil. Going all the way out. like so. And these, we're going to save this metal foil to use for the new screen. And for the new screen you just put it down right where it is so the connector is exposed and the corner lines up with the new screen. So let's put that to the side. And finally they have a piece of padding, rubber padding on the back of the screen. So that's not part of the screen also, that's part of the laptop. So we remove this rubber padding. This is a little bit unusual and there's so much stuff that's on the screen. Usually laptop laptops don't have this stuff but we gotta follow the procedure for each screen differently. So once again we set the rubber padding aside and when we have the new screen we put the rubber padding back on. It the, looks like the positioning doesn't really matter as long as it's somewhere around in this area. Okay, let's take a look at the screen itself. The screen itself, it's, um, it's a 15.6 inch LED screen as of late 2014. It's a very common screen that goes on laptops, so we should not be in trouble finding it. And the part number is N156BGE-L21. 
N156BGE-L21. Most likely the screen that you receive when you order a new one will not have the same part number, but it will be compatible and it will have be the exact same size and the connector will be in the same location. And the finish on this particular screen is glossy. Okay, uh, to we also we as screen surgeons surgeons also sell this screen and what you get with us is a compatibility compatibility guarantee. We guarantee you that the screen you receive will be compatible with your laptop. You have a, a two-year warranty against defects in the screen and you have free email technical support. So if anything goes wrong during the installation procedure, send us an email and we'll work through it. Finally, you get this exact same toolkit that I'm using in this video for free with the screen so you'll have all the tools you need to replace the screen. And we ship in the United States, we ship for free using priority mail. So you'll get your screen in two or three days after ordering. So to order this screen from us, go to www.screensurgeons.com. There'll be a short form for you to fill out that'll guide you to the right screen online and then you go through the checkout procedure. If you live outside of the United States, we can ship to most countries around the world. Just follow the checkout procedure and select your country. All right, once you do get the screen in, put the rubber padding in on right about here as I showed you. Put the metal foil back on, straighten it out, make sure it's nice and flat and straight, and put it in the corner so it lines up with the screen. Reconnect the connector as I showed you. Then put the two metal brackets on the sides of the screen. Mount the screen in the screen assembly and then tilting the tilting the back of the screen assembly back, put the two screws in at the bottom. Then put the four screws in, that two on each side. Then put the two screws in at the top, and that's why it's important to keep track of which screws go where by step for each step in the process. Snap the screen bezel back on, put the two screws in at the bottom, then put the screw covers in, and you should be done. Okay, that's it. Once again, my name is Eugene Panrutkovich. I'm the laptop screen doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Thank you very much and good luck.